okay, yeah, I definitely have to raise this up a little bit more. I guess this will do. I guess I can't ask for much. Okay. Whatever. Ah, oh, no, it's not whatever. It would never be whatever. Welcome to or welcome back to my channel. My name is LaShawn and this is Lush Uncut. So on today, I am coming to you all with a book review. I have not done a book review in a very, very, very long time. So I'm super excited about this. This book that I'm going to be reviewing was really good. So I'm super excited to review it. Um, so yeah, let's get right into it. So the book of choice for today's review is 1984 by George Orwell. Let's get into it. So George Orwell, he was a famous novelist, essayist, um, I think writer. He was born in 1905, I believe, and died sometime after 1950. Um, he lived through two world wars and um, the rise of the Soviets and all of that fun stuff. If you want to know a little bit more about him, just do a quick Google search and it will show you all that you need to do, need to read, um, that you need to know. But trust me, he's a very good writer and I think his perspective was um, is worth looking at. Here is my quick summary of the book. 1984 is a dystopian novel that follows the day-to-day -day life of a man somewhere in his mid-30s by the name of Winston. Winston lives in the country or empire or statehood of Oceana. Oceana is ruled by Big Brother, which is basically a synonym, synonym for an all-encompassing ruling party. In Oceana, war is peace, love is hate, plenty is scarcity, the thought police reigns, history is what the party or big brother says it is, and most importantly, dissent of any kind is not tolerated. Winston eventually falls in love with this young lady named Julia, and they basically start this really intense love affair, defying the party, and at some point they meet their end not like they die i'm not saying they didn't die for anyone that um is wondering what happens but eventually they get they get caught for my overall rating i'm going to give this book a 4.5 out of 5 which may seem surprising because i know this book is very well known and um receives a lot of accolades as it should but the reason why it took away half of a point was there was a point in the storyline where the story kind of takes a turn and it was very unexpected and I just felt like Orwell could have done a better job at like creating um like some type of foreshadowing of what was about to happen but that's just my personal opinion and who am I to criticize George Orwell so please take that with a grain of salt what I disliked about this book um I think I mentioned the turning point and also the writing was very classic it was old school it was very vintage and there were some words that I did not know but again that is relative to my knowledge and my vocabulary so for some people this could probably just be just be like an evening of reading um but at times I had to reread a couple of sentences and a couple of paragraphs I'm not ashamed to say that because we all have opportunity and room to grow so if you are not someone that reads a lot there may be points where you're just like what but I did appreciate the fact that the writing was classical that it introduced me to new vocabulary words because you know it's a learning experience read the ending I wanted it to end different <laughs> I wanted the ending to be a little bit more hopeful and a little bit more like upbeat. Um, again, I'm not saying that Winston or Julia died. I'm just saying I was hoping for a better ending and I did not get that. But regardless, I think the ending obviously added to the um, the gravity of the situation that was in Oceana. So it, it helped the overall point that I think that Oral was trying to like prove or show to the reader. But for me being a more positive person, it hurt my feelings. What I did like, Orwell did a great job describing the setting to the reader. The writing was very descriptive. Orwell also did an awesome job building the fiction, um, blending the fictional world of Oceana with the real world and bringing elements of the time into the storyline. Like I said before, Orwell um, 
grew up and witnessed two world wars and the rise of um, totalitarian governments and dictatorships and all of these things. So if you, when you read this book or if you have ever read this book, you can see that there's certain components of um, totalitarianism within Oceana, obviously. So I think he did a really good job at blending the two um, to the point where if you have knowledge of these past historical events and you read this book, it's very easy for you to kind of connect the two and see what he's trying to prove. Objectively, I think it was an awesome book. Okay, so the content review, and this is basically like my <sighs> subjective opinion on what Orwell was saying throughout the book. So, um, Overall, I think if I was to say one thing, um, this book scared the crap out of me, honestly, truly speaking, because there are so many like elements and things in this book that remind me of what is going on today. And like knowing how Oceana is described at this awful, great place, void of love and God and happiness, where everyone is to just follow the same path everyone has to think the same it's just like i don't want to live in a world like that so when i see components of that type of world in my everyday experience it definitely scared me a little bit so one of the things i think that um made me feel this way was the existence of the thought police the thought police are basically like us like in the context of oceana it's basically like a secret um the secret police of the super state they can basically be compared to the the secret police or the not so secret police of the n party that um ruled germany during world war ii so that's that so the fact that they were called the thought police is kind of what made me nervous because when i think about the way things are today in terms of just everyone wanting everyone <laughs> to, to think the same and how certain thoughts or just dissent on certain issues are just not tolerated by pop culture or like mainstream media or people that um get to decide what's okay whereas just like any type of dissent or any thought that is outside of what is allowed basically gets just like shut down or like super criticized and it's just like we've gotten to the point where people are afraid to share their thoughts because they know they're going to be really ridiculed on a public stage so when I'm reading this book and I hear about the thought police police I can't help but think about the blue checks on Twitter like in some way shape or form they are the, th the th thought police of 2021 and it's just like why is this why is this okay and yes i understand that like like there should be room for criticism in public discourse but i feel like the way we treat people's people whose opinions don't correlate or align with ours is a little scary it's like you're very much given 1984 you know Another thing was the existence of Newspeak. Newspeak was the official language of Oceana and had been devised to meet the ideological needs of INSOC or English Socialism. The purpose of Newspeak was not only to provide a medium of expression for the world's view and mental habits proper to the devotees of INSOC, but to make all other modes of thought impossible. It was intended that when Newspeak had been adopted once and for all, and once and for all, an old speak forgotten, a hieratical thought, that is, a thought diversion from the principles of Insoc, should be literally unthinkable, at least so far as thought is dependent on words. So basically what Newspeak is was just like the invention of new words or tailoring words um tailoring the definition of words that already existed so that when we communicate we're all basically saying the same thing and when you think about what's going on today with the way we've been changing words and changing the definition of words is just like again you're giving 1984 like for example when um the new word popped up latinx out of nowhere and all of a sudden it's like a thing and the when you think about the fact that they're trying to redefine an entire language an entire culture to suit their like the progressive ideologies of today it's just like 
you're giving 1984 <laughs> and that's not okay like another thing is the way we have been inventing new sexual orientations we're inventing new words again to shape the way people communicate like if you're calling a woman a woman and you're just like oh that's a female that's a grown adult female is a woman you're like no a woman according to our old definition is just a person who can give birth so we changed the word from woman to birth in person so it's just like a person that's not being able that's not able to give birth can also be called a woman again we're changing definitions of words to suit our com our new um present day ideologies another example of this and a more recent one was the use of the word infrastructure when you think about the new infrastructure bill that's been um trying to get through congress and, and passed into law i guess you can say um i've been hearing people use intra infrastructure to um define health care or voting laws and rules and regulations or climate change things and it's just like no when i grew up infrastructure was bridges and tunnels and like tangible things that you can touch like that's what infrastructure was before 2021 so it's like we're taking words changing their definitions or changing the way that they can be used and interpreted to suit our new ideologies again given 1984 another thing um was the absence of religion in oceana like there was like religion and anything derived out of religion like love and care and like um compassion that was basically disappeared and i think the reason for that being is just like the party or big brother needs to be the ultimate authority and if you follow religion if you have a, a an authority outside of the world as we know it that you subscribe to obviously that's a problem for a uh, ruling party it's just like no we are the final authority we are god and again when you think about the way a certain group of people today has um thrown out religion in the name of ideology and they're saying no our way of thinking is final authority like basically we are your new gods we are the priests of this religion and you have to follow what we're saying so it's just like this is why i said this book scared me because it's just like yo this is not like exclusive to this book here this is something that has happened in the past and it's happening right now and a lot of people say that uh, when George Orwell wrote this it was some type of prophecy of things to come but I think he said it that it was not a prophecy but it's a warning because a prophecy then indicates that something is going to happen this has already happened this is just like a basic outline of the um, of what happens or what needs to happen in a totalitarian government or society and like this is the outline if you follow this outline this is what you end up getting i think was that's what basically he was saying so there are a couple of passages in this book that i wanted to highlight um i was trying not to make this video too long but here we are so the reason i chose these um passages was because i feel like they speak to something that is going on in our society and i think that they are important so on page 215 the books reads the books reads the book reads, <laughs> in our society, those who have the best knowledge of what is happening are also those who, those who are farthest from seeing the world as it is. In general, the greater the understanding, the greater the delusion, the more intelligent, the less sane. One clear illustration of this is the fact that war hysteria increases in intensity as one rises in the social scale. So I think what all the, what I think he was saying here is like the elites, right? These people that are that frequent these insulated social bubbles of like just thinking that they know more than anyone else. We're just like you you know so much that you don't know nothing. And I think it speaks to politicians and popular figures and these billionaires who are so far removed from common day people that they they they've grown insane with knowledge. 
and they have convinced themselves that they know what's best for everyone else even if they don't know anything about what everyone else is experiencing and when you think about people that are caught up in the world of academia where like on a day-to-day -day basis their job is basically to think critically and, and examine things and while that's good because you know that's where a lot of the great um, ideas of Western civilization have come from well not all of them but a majority of them or a decent amount of them I should say but it's just like when you become so far removed from the everyday individual when all you're around are people who just think themselves into circles to the point where they're crazy it's just like this is what Orwell was talking about crazy people that think they know better for everyone else so that's one passage um yeah like when you think about like Bill Gates that guy got a couple of screws loose for sure page 216 reads and this one is a little long the official ideology abounds with contradictions even where there is no practical reason for them thus the party rejects rejects and vilifies every principle for which the socialist movement originally stood and it chooses to do so in the name of socialism it preaches contempt for the working class example for centuries past and unexampled for centuries past and addresses its members in a uniform which was at one time peculiar to manual workers and was adopted for the reason. It systematically undermines the solidarity of the family and calls its leaders by a name which is a direct appeal to the sentiment of family loyalty. It says later on, on on that page, these contradictions are not accidental, nor do they result from ordinary hypocrisy. They are deliberate exercises in doublethink. For it is by reconciling contradictions that power can be retained, indefinitely. In no other way could the accent cycle be broken. If human equality is to be forever, if the high, as we have called them, are to, be, are to keep their places permanently, then the prevailing mental condition must be controlled in sanity. I read that and I was like, why is he preaching? why is he preaching because basically what he, he's saying in like my interpretation of what he's saying is just like these people say like for example i think a great example of this is religion like in 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 modern day like the left or the ruling class or the elites i'm gonna start calling them that that's like basically all these super left-leaning politicians and, and celebrities and and cultural figures that encompass the the elites of today like for example they are very anti-religion at least most of them but then they like basically mirror religious practices and how they um express the need for people to follow what they're saying like Leftism is basically a modern day religion. There are very specific rules. There are certain people who are held to a standard so way they can enforce those rules. And it's just like when you think about like leftist policies also, like when it comes to the economic policies, they put these policies in place to say we are helping the poor, we are helping the underdog when all of those policies cripple the poor, cripple the underdog and make it very much harder for people to succeed in life. So it's just like you live in this world of contradiction and it's just like the only way for their 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 message to have some type of substance, substance is just like it has to contradict itself like even when you think about the way we've been talking about biological sex it's just like you want me to unlearn to basically negate data and science to convince myself that what you're saying is true in some sense it is somewhat insane for someone to believe that they are more than two sexes but then it's just like they create these boundaries around it to say there's 2400,000 sexes and these are all experienced in whatever different ways it's like basically controlled insanity like just as oral says in the book so that was just like wow like he was making so much sense to me so in a last passage I want to read and this is the very last one because like um, I'm definitely going over time Page 217 says, being in a minority, even a minority of one, did not make you mad. 
there was truth and there was untruth and if you clung to the truth even against the whole world you are not mad and this goes out to all the people <laughs> like myself that feel like lately they've been losing their minds we're not losing our minds guys we're we're not losing our minds as long as we keep ourselves based in truth open for correction with open minds critically analyzing everything that's going around going on around us we're not the crazy ones everyone else is <laughs> I don't want to say like everyone else is but like you're not crazy and I, I think when he says here like even a minority of one did not make you mad so it's like just because everyone else around you is losing their minds it may seem as if you're the crazy one like you're mad no you're not mad just because you're standing alone does not make you insane that is the end of this review thank you for watching it i really think you should read this book um take your time and read it find some other people to talk about it with i think it's a really 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 good read considering all that's happening today so yeah that is the end of my book review thank you for watching this video if you enjoyed this please feel free to subscribe to the channel smash that like button throw something in the in, throw something in the comments comment section down below and hit that notification bell so when I upload you will be notified. Thank you, thank you for your time and your attention. Remember to be blessed and be a blessing.